In this tutorial in Cyberlink Power Director, we're going to continue our look at designing your own particles. And in this particular tutorial, we're going to look at the seven particle styles that you have to pick from. Let's assume that we want to create a particle we can use on a commercial for a vehicle like the one you see here or other projects in the future. We simply go to the particle room, which is our spray of dots on the left side or the F6 key. And then to create one, you click on the top, the folded piece of paper with a plus in the lower right corner. That gets us into our particle designer. Immediately, it goes to the last location it found where the particles were. This is a default location. You can navigate to any location on any drive and file folder in your operating system and then just pick the particle you want. I'll pick this one here, which I added to the default number, and click on Open. And here we have uh, uh, the emit method being a point, which is the default. And we had another tutorial dealing with the three primary emit methods as well as some remarks about the mask. What we're going to do now is click on the second area, which is particle style. I'd like to show you how that varies. So for the sake of this illustration, we're going to use the point emit method. We'll take it off the screen just a little bit. And if I play it, you see items and they move from left to right. And the default is bubble. And you know what bubble does? They move away in an indefinite pattern, up and down slightly, and they spread out according to the emit method. Let's look at another one. The next one we have is one called ball. I'm using the same emit method, but I can mix these up. We'll show you in a moment how to do that. When I use the ball, what happens? Well, in this case, it doesn't look like hardly anything changes, but you notice when the particles hit the bottom of the screen, like gravity, they bounce up. Now let's change this a little bit. Let's change the direction of the particles so more of them hit the ground and then we'll play this again and you notice the bounce a little better. If we were to actually move the particle and have it go straight down, now you notice it quite dramatically. Now it's interesting that when you use this method, this only affects article particles that move toward the bottom of the screen. If I take my emit method and move in any other direction, like move to the top of the screen and continue to play, it has no impact. They spread out, but there's no bouncing. So that's the unique thing about the ball particle style. It treats it like it's gravity, and when the particles hit the bottom of the screen, then they do some bouncing back. Let's look at the third option we have in particle styles. That's called swing. And when I play this, basically, we find that the particle rocks back and forth. There's a little bit of expansion and contraction, but not much. Now, in this case, you'd probably want to reduce the frequency and the number of particles. We'll get into that in other parameters later. The next one is scale. Again, we'll move this to the right so you can see better. What scale does is scale takes the particles, they begin large, and the farther away they get from the point of origin, the smaller they get. We'll play this for a moment, and you notice they uh, drift off into very, very tiny fragments of what they once were. They shrink as they move away from the point of origin. That's what scale does. I'm going to skip down to spread. Now, spread is the opposite of scale. When you use spread, they get larger as they uh, move away from the point of origin. So here they start small and they move large. And again, you can change the parameters for the size of where they start and the size of how big they can get. And we'll look at that in more detail as we dig down into the program. But this is the general motion that you get with the spread, which is opposite of scale. Then we have one called Blink. Blink is a rather interesting one. If we play it, we find that basically we have this motion. There's, it's like swing, only there is no movement left to right. 
but you can get the object to blink as it were. And again, I would do this with fewer number particles and larger size particles. Again, we can control those features. We'll talk about that in another lesson. And the last one we have in terms of style is called spring. Spring is a little bit like ball, only it, it works no matter what direction the particles are moving. The particles move out and kind of stick in an order. There's a little bit of bounce going on, but they basically stick. Let's try one uh, in, toward the bottom. And you see they move and they freeze there. And again, let's try it a little toward another uh, way off the screen in the upper left. And they never go too far. They just pop and they stick. And you can't control how far away they are. You can control the spread, but you can, can't control the distance at which they stop. Let's try it this way. So those are the seven major particle styles. Now one thing you might want to keep in mind is you can also combine styles and emit methods. Right now we're on the spring style. Let's click on the line emit method that we covered in another tutorial. And watch the difference. Now the source is different because it's a line source but the style is the same. Likewise, we could use the lines, say, with the uh, swing, and we'd have the particles merging along a line and swinging, or we could use the blink or the ball or the, the default, which is the bubble. We'll stop this and go back to our default. And here we have the combination of line and bubble. And let's do uh, line and spread, or I call it expand. Again, the source is a line. We've got the direction controlled, and that's how that one works. So we hope this is helpful as you begin to expand your ability to design your own particles using the seven styles as well as the emit methods. More to come.